Hello, I'm Simon Keyes, Director of St Ethelberger's Centre for Reconciliation and Peace. And I'm going to be talking to you about the theory and practice of dialogue, which is something we use a lot at the centre. There are quite a lot of misconceptions about dialogue. You need to think clearly about what it is for, to be good at it. The way I think of dialogue is it's about using words to explore complex situations. Using words to explore complex situations. Um, and a very important thing about dialogue is to understand where the word comes from. Some people think because it has die at the front, it means two. Somehow it's a conversation between two different positions. That doesn't take you very far. Um, the, the origin of the word dialogue is a Greek word, uh, and, and, the, and dia means through, not to. So dialogue is about finding meaning through the use of words, not the negotiation of opposing positions or uh, uh, some kind of uh, argument between different uh, uh, worldviews. If you get that idea, it's about finding meaning through words, then you've got the heart of dialogue. Um, one of uh, that phrase, finding meaning through words, actually comes from uh, a physicist called David Bohm, who's written some very, very interesting stuff about dialogue, and there'll be a reference at the end of this presentation if you want to follow that up. Uh, another way of thinking about dialogue is it's a process of shared thinking, shared thinking and shared inquiry, thinking together. Um, and uh, uh, so pooling uh, one's brains, and particularly if you're pooling brains on a subject that is quite um, divisive or polarizing or controversial, there's actually a lot to be gained from understanding and listening to points of view other than your own. Um, one other thing I would say about dialogue, which David Bohm points out, is that good dialogue is also it's a mirror for your own thinking process. When you're sitting in, having a conversation with someone who holds very different views to your own, they may be an enemy or in opposition to you in some way, um, it, a good dialogue it enables you to watch how you react to what that person's saying. If you feel uh, angry or emotional or bored, those things are very important because they give you clues, I think, to how you could improve your understanding of the, the thing that has been discussed. So dialogue is not, not a question of two uh, things coming together, it's a question of jointly exploring through words. It's about shared thinking and inquiry, and it's a mirror for your own thinking. So it's a very powerful tool. Um, now, a lot of people get confused about the difference between dialogue, discussion, debate, etc. So I'll just give you some very simple definitions here to help clarify this. And there are many different ways of describing it. The way I think of it is discussion. Okay, what's the difference between discussion and dialogue? It's, um, a discussion is really about unpicking other people's arguments and refining your own arguments. It's a perfectly good thing to do, but it's not the same as dialogue. Another word people often uh, use is deliberation. Uh, deliberation, public deliberation. Deliberation is a more reflective process of trying to reach a consensus or decision of some kind. Dialogue is not about reaching decisions, that's very important to say. Uh, people talk about debate. Uh, uh, what's the difference between debate and dialogue? Well, debate is about winning an argument. It's about putting one set of proposals against another and seeing which is strongest. That's not dialogue. Dialogue is about a process of mutual exploration, mutual understanding. Uh, very important to say that good dialogue never has a specific outcome in mind, unlike discussion, deliberation, or debate. So dialogue is an open process of thinking together about difficult or complex issues. So um, what are some of the things that make for good dialogue? Well, one of the first things you have to uh, ensure is that you have a safe space for dialogue. If you're talking about something that is controversial uh, or maybe very painful for individuals, if you're involved, for instance, in a conflict situation, I was talking with someone from uh, uh, Burundi last night, the appalling things that have happened to him and his family and his friends. Uh, these are very difficult things for him to talk about. So you have to create a degree of safety that enables people to express difficult and painful subjects. And um, you need some sort of container to do that. Uh, now, the container, this is a word that someone called William Isaacs writes very interestingly about. A container is both a physical space where you feel comfortable, you're not going to be interrupted, where you don't feel threatened by other people's presence. 
Um, but it's also a sort of psychological space where you don't feel uh, under threat, where you don't feel the need to, to censor what you're going to say. So a container is about creating a physical and a psychological space where it's okay to say anything. Uh, that's very important to pay attention to creating the safety if you're going to have a, have a good dialogue. Um, so it, uh, creating a situation where there's an absence of fear and self-censorship is very, very important. It's worth saying that it's often, but by no means always, important to have a facilitator uh, in a dialogue, somebody who is the guardian of the safe space. Uh, this is somebody who won't participate in the actual conversation, but actually will ensure that the conversation takes place according to whatever's been agreed by the participants. Um, so, for instance, a facilitator would make sure that one person doesn't dominate the conversation, that minority views are able uh, to be heard, that, that people don't attack each other. Um, it's also worth saying that a facilitator would encourage people to ask good questions, encourage them to be curious about other points of view. So a facilitator keeps the, the conversation open. Um, and uh, uh, it is possible to have good dialogue without a facilitator, but very often, I think, but certainly if you're going into a new situation where people don't know each other, may, may be frightened of each other, or they may be anxious about the dialogue itself, then having a, a trained facilitator is probably going to be very helpful. And facilitation is not a very complicated thing. It's actually common sense, but it really requires clarity. So, let me just say a little bit more about uh, 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 um, what actually happens in dialogue. And I'd like here again to refer to William Isaacs. Um, he has some uh, uh, good observations about what people need to do in a dialogue for it to be successful in exploring complex issues. Um, the first is um, to suspend assumptions, certainties and judgment. You may go into a situation thinking you know it all, and in which case you will not be able to have a dialogue. Because the essence of dialogue is actually listening to points of view you may not have considered or that you may have rejected. So you have to uh, go into a dialogue willing to suspend the assumptions you make about other people, willing to suspend the judgment you make about other people. If someone says something that makes you angry, don't jump in and try and shut them up. Listen to what they're really trying to say. Check that you really understand what they're saying, not the little voice in your head which says what you think they might be saying. And suspend that and keep, keep listening. So suspend assumptions, judgments, certainties. And a good facilitator will help people do that. Um, the second thing is, uh, uh, remember dialogue is a mirror, to observe what's going on uh, as the dialogue take pl takes place. What are you excited about? What are you upset about? What are you angry about? And why? Why is that? Observe how other people are reacting to what people are saying. Someone may some say something that a lot of people agree with, other people disagree with. You may want to explore the difference between those two positions. So observing what's going on, not just sitting in your, in your own little head thinking about what you're going to say next. A lovely line, I don't know where this came from, somebody told me once was, what's the opposite of listening? It's preparing to speak. You're too busy thinking what you're saying next to actually listen to what someone else is saying. And you could be missing something really important. So um, another very important thing about dialogue is it, it should be a leisurely process, uh, not a rushed process. You're not trying to reach a decision. You're not trying to solve the problems of the world. You're trying to understand other people's points of view. So slow things down a bit. Be curious, be inquiring, ask questions. Don't feel you have to rush into making decisions or reaching conclusions. In a way, the slower and the more open a dialogue can be, the more effective it will be. Um, so that's um, uh, 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 some of William Isaac's ideas about what successful dialogue is. Um, and one other thing I think I would say is, um, in a dialogue, be fearless if you can. Don't avoid difficult or polarizing subjects. See them as something that within the safety of this group you can actually explore, be curious about, find more about, um, and, and even explore perhaps your own feelings about why they may be difficult. So be brave um, and befriend 
polarization or difference or division. That's what you're really there to try and grasp. So there are some thoughts about what uh, happens in a, in, a, in a good dialogue. Okay, I'd now like to say a few words about what I think the main skills are involved in dialogue are for the participants. And a facilitator may well train you in these skills or will certainly be trying to encourage you to use them in a dialogue. Um, and these are really, really simple, obvious things, but it's amazing how often we don't do them. The primary skill of dialogue is the skill of listening. Uh, being able to listen to what someone who doesn't share your views is saying. And one of the tests of good listening is, are you able to repeat what someone has just said to you accurately? Um, particularly if it's something you disagree with or may upset you. Uh, if you've not understood it accurately, how can you trust your reactions? How can you trust that you've understood that person's position? So the ability to listen accurately to things that may be uncomfortable is really crucial to good, good dialogue. And listening is, is a skill that can be learned. It's about emptying your mind of your own preoccupations, listening to what someone else has to say. It's about being accurate. It's about recognizing the emotional effect of, of something being said on you, and so forth. So you'll probably have another talk about listening. But listening is the primary skill involved in dialogue. If you're not listening, you're not in a dialogue. Second related skill is asking good questions. Uh, not the kind of accusatory questions, why do you think that, or surely you don't, but open-ended questions. I'm really interested that you say that. Tell me more about that. Gosh, I've never heard that before. Um, and c questions that encourage people to say more rather than uh, censor or judge them. So if you're listening and you're asking good questions, uh, you are most of the way to a, a good dialogue. The third uh, um, uh, quality that you need to bring to a good dialogue as a participant is curiosity. If you uh, go into a dialogue not prepared to listen to something different, something you haven't experienced before, or you allow yourself to become bored, uh, or uh, uh, you start trying to simply defend your point of view uh, at the expense of other people's, you won't have uh, a dialogue. You won't be able to explore what's going on here. If you are curious, uh, all kinds of things open up. If you have a disagreement, if you have a severe disagreement, be curious about why you have a disagreement. Don't get stuck with the fact you are having a disagreement. Why are you having this disagreement? What is this disagreement about? Why is this disagreement important to me? Why is it important to someone else? So curiosity is the great enabler of dialogue. So just to recap, the primary skills of dialogue, simple human skills, but which need to be brought to bear in this safe space are listening, asking good questions, and curiosity. If you do those things, you are in for a voyage of discovery of difference. So one final aspect of dialogue that I'd like to mention in this introductory talk is that dialogue is not just about issues. Dialogue is also about relationship building. Um, this is a very important uh, aspect of, 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 of dialogue. It's not about just about gaining information or understanding other intellectual viewpoints. It is actually about reinterpreting, if you like, the relationship you have with the other person or people in the group. Now, if this is someone with whom you are in conflict or with whom you have a big disagreement, you can see how important dialogue is if dialogue enables you to recalibrate uh, this relationship. Now, what is really, really important in allowing this to happen is that within the safety of this contained space, uh, that people speak as personally as possible about how the issue being discussed affects them, that they talk about their own personal experience, um, that they tell stories, that they don't try and theorize or defend ideological positions, but they speak personally about what the effect of this conflict or this issue is on them. Now, if you hear somebody saying something honest and open, even if you strongly have resisted talking to them in the past, I will bet that that begins to change your attitude towards them. There may be a moment where you suddenly see, gosh, yes, I can see why that hurt that person, 
or I can understand how that person has suffered, or that person actually had an experience rather like mine, so maybe we're not so different after all. So one of the things that might happen in a dialogue, and this is what a good facilitator will always be looking for, is a moment where empathy is experienced, where somehow a, a new kind of understanding of the relationship between two people occurs. That's a very, very important thing to look for in, in dialogue. Not always easy, but in my opinion it depends fundamentally on people be, being prepared to open their hearts and talk honestly about the issues uh, that may have divided you. Another remarkable thing happens at this moment, um, that the stereotypes and prejudices you may hold about the other person or the other people or about the issue are not sustainable at that moment, where you begin to get a more complex understanding of this of the substantive discussion. Uh, the, the stereotypes you may have about uh, the other person, all Bosnians, all Muslims, you know, all uh, right-wing people, you know, all, live, all people who live in the countryside, all the, the prejudices and the stereotypes we have about them, they're no longer sustainable because the human reality is more complex than that. And actually beginning to let go of stereotypes and prejudices is one of the most important things that happens in dialogue. Um, and it's not, you don't have to make an effort to put them aside, you just realise that they're too simplistic, they're not sustainable. So that's a very important thing that also happens in dialogue as relationship building. There is another um, a very important aspect of this renegotiation of uh, re relationships that might happen in a good dialogue. And this is where mutuality and interdependence become visible. You may realise, you, even though you hadn't thought of it before, that you have a common interest uh, with the person uh, uh, who previously you've, you've rejected. Now, it could be quite, something quite simple. It could be you just like foot, both discover you like football, and therefore a bond uh, occurs between you. But it could also be that you find that both of you are very unhappy about the situation in which you find yourself, and both of you would like to change it. Um, and uh, you've never thought before that, your other, that the other person, the opponent, might want to change things. But to realise that they are, are as uncomfortable as you in this situation is a very important moment. Uh, it's not necessarily saying, necessarily saying that you're going to find a solution to how to change things, but at least you find you've got a common interest in doing that. And as the process of dialogue emerges, you may well find that solutions begin to appear. So mutuality and interdependence become visible. So just to recap, the aspect of dialogue as relationship building is, is a very, very uh, important thing that facilitators and participants should be aware of, the potential for changing the relationships between the participants in a way that changes the world. And the three aspects of it are, first of all, that people have to be prepared to speak honestly and, and, and openly speak personally, speak for themselves and not try and rep represent other people's points of view. Secondly, that wonderful moment where you realise you need to go beyond stereotypes and prejudices. And then thirdly, looking for those moments when mutuality and independence become, become visible. So those are the, the key things I would like to, to share with you ab 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 about, about dialogue as a, as a starting point. Um, there are some things you can read which will uh, uh, come up on your screen in a minute, I think. Um, and just to, to encourage you, um, I have found dialogue an incredibly enriching experience. Not just about problem solving, not just about dealing with difficult situations, but I found my own thinking, my own awareness of the world, my own perception has been really changed by good dialogue enabling me to see how other people see the world. Um, and you can see uh, that if that happens, uh, that really makes a huge difference in terms of any kind of conflict, disagreement, division. Dialogue provides an opportunity for opening up and re-understanding the world in a way that leads to change. Thank you.